What happens when you take Intel's monster i9 13900H, 14 core, 20 thread processor, and squish it into a tiny mini PC like the Geekom IT13? That's a good question, and a good test case scenario for high powered chips. Can it be done? Of course it can. Can it be done well? But before we answer that question, the EaseUS disk copy software makes upgrading your storage drives faster and easier. Clone drives or migrate Windows installations to new ones with a simple and easy to use interface. This app supports disk, system and even partition cloning. Find out more with the link in the video description. So I've been really looking forward to checking out Geekom's IT13 and how Intel's flagship CPU holds up in a form factor this small. The mini PC comes in three flavors with different CPUs and configurations in each, starting from $499 US dollars all the way up to $789 US dollars for the i9-13900H with 32GB of RAM and a 2TB NVMe SSD. I think this is the first mini PC I've seen with a 2TB configuration as standard, which is cool, but it also has a price tag to match. The 13900H has 14 cores, 20 threads, and Intel's Iris Xe integrated graphics. In the box is the HDMI cord, power supply, manual, thank you card, monitor mount, and screws. The IT13's design is heavily inspired by Intel NUX and looks very similar. It has a sturdy metal frame inside, but it is covered in a plastic shell, just like the recent Intel NUX Pro units. As always, at this high end, a metal case would have been the way to go, but I will say, as far as plastics go, it's at least solid and feels premium like the NUC cases. Geekom does a good job of labeling the ports on the actual IT13, and it's something I want to see on every Mini. The front has dual USB 10 gigabit, with one of them being a fast charging port. There's an audio jack and power button as well. On the side is a full-size SD card reader, which is very useful for photo and video editing. On the back, there are dual USB 4 40 gigabit ports, which support display out. Dual HDMI 2.0, 2.5 gigabit LAN, USB 3 10 gigabit, and a USB 2. Not the best port selection I've seen, but definitely a nice one. This mini PC can handle four displays at the same time. 8K 30Hz on the USB 4 ports, and 4K 60Hz on the HDMI 2.0. Opening it up is just like an Intel NUC. Four exposed screws, lift the lid, and watch out for the SATA ribbon cable. For cooling, the NVMe drive is connected to the bottom plate by a thermal pad. The bottom is made of metal, which aids in heat dissipation. 32GB of DDR4-3200 dual channel memory is included, as well as a 2TB Lexa Gen 4 NVMe drive. And under that, is an Intel AX211 Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth card. There's a 2.5 inch SATA drive bay and an M.2 2242 SATA slot as well for storage expansion. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed on the IT13. Ubuntu tested off a USB drive works fine if you want to change your OS. Alright then, the benchmarks are important to gauge its performance, so let's get to it. In single core, I expected the IT13's i9-13900H to hit the top of the chart, but it was actually around the middle, with significantly lower performance than the i7 Intel NUX. In multi-core, again, I thought the IT13 would take the top spot, but it was around i7 NUX level. This didn't seem right, so I looked up what score the i9-13900H should be getting, and it's also on Geekom's product page. 1932 for single core, which is 12% faster than what my unit came back with. For multi core, it says 19,318, which is 63% faster. Ignore the 12900H figure, that's an error. It should be around 16,500. Anyway, the Geekom IT13 is only bringing back a multi core score around two thirds of what the chip can do. So I contacted Geekom to make sure this was correct, and yep, the numbers checked out. With video encoding, the IT13 was the second fastest Intel Mini PC, but still behind the i7 NUC 13 Pro slightly. In the 3D Mark graphics benchmark, the IT13 matched the NUC 13 Pro in DX11, and again in DX12. So no additional improvement in iGPU performance over the i7. Since I recently reviewed a Mini PC with the i7 12650H, 
I wanted to see how the 13900H compares in games and also against AMD's 7735HS which has the graphics advantage. In League of Legends, the IT13 holds up pretty well. It's a bit behind the AMD Mini. Valorant is a CPU heavy title and the IT13 manages to come out on top, sometimes going above 200 FPS. However, in Forza Horizon 5, it's clearly behind the AMD chip. Same with Elden Ring. And in Cyberpunk, the difference in frame rate is big. Oh, I was at the hospital today. Javi's got some broken ribs. God of War, well, you can see it's more of the same. With Wii U emulation, all three minis perform pretty similarly. And for PS3 emulation, the IT13 was behind in two of the three games against the AMD chip. So, AAA PC gaming is not the i9 strong suit. It does better in eSports. But you can of course use the USB 4 port for an eGPU, and here I'm playing at 4K with an RTX 3070 on my Razer Core X eGPU. One area Intel CPUs have an advantage over AMD is in video editing, thanks to the H.264 and AV1 hardware decoder found on this chip. This mini works well for 4K editing, and is a responsive experience scrubbing across the timeline, at least in my project. If it had full i9 performance, it would also be the fastest mini at exporting video files. The BIOS is bare bones and allows you to set a fan mode, and there's not much else really. I have to say that I didn't notice much difference between the default and performance mode in noise or benchmark results when I tested them both. CPU temp hit 98C with thermal throttling kicking in. This is around the Intel NUC level. Idle power draw was as expected, and max power draw peaked at a new high of 115 watts. So, there's a lot of heat to get rid of. Fan noise was strange on the IT13. The fan runs fairly high at idle and ramps up and down. It was hard to get a good figure on it. Same deal under load. It went as high as 42 dBA, but that was brief. Most of the time it was at 38. So that's a figure I used. At 38 dBA, it's not very loud under load compared to the others, but it should be running higher since it's thermal throttling. The fan curve with both modes in the BIOS seems off, and you can't set it on your own. The Lexa NVMe drives controller managed to stay under 90C but this result was higher than I expected considering the cooling. It performs well for a Gen 4 drive with similar read and write speeds. So with all that out of the way, it's conclusion time. The Geekom IT13 features dual USB 4 ports and can handle up to three storage drives. Design wise, it looks like an Intel NUC, which is nice, and the top model features the flagship i9-13900H. Only problem is, that i9 is not able to perform at full speed. 
Both single core and multi core are down, but multi core performance is around two thirds of what it should be. You're looking at around 13th gen i7 NUC performance. Geekom's IT13 i9 model is the noisiest mini PC at idle I've tested. The fan is noticeable even when it's not doing anything at all. But surprisingly, under load, it wasn't much louder than idle. The BIOS could do with more options, especially a manual fan curve option. Too much is hidden, and the premium price compared to other minis is definitely a factor to keep in mind. Having Intel's i9-13900H and a mini PC this size is impressive, but the cooling solution is holding it back from being the CPU performance king. I am curious how well the i7 and especially the i5 model of the IT13 hold up. But as it is, the Geekom IT13 i9 model performs similarly to a 13th gen i7 NUC, which I had a second look at right here. Cheers.